Castle Street in Edinburgh. Down the castle. Oh my God. It's an alien spaceship. I'm going to preach the gospel. Well, you go about the singing, is that alright? Can I sing? No, no. No? I'll just tell you a testimony, first of all, of a friend who stayed in... Oh, you alright, pal? Okay. Give you a testimony of a friend who stayed in Spain and he was a nightclub owner for a few years anyway. Did a few things he shouldn't have done, you know, uh, dealing stuff like that. He had a girlfriend and what happened was she got pregnant. He, he aborted the child um, that he had with his girlfriend. And then something happened to him, he was out drinking. One night he felt really, really bad, ill health, went to bed, had a dream. And God showed him that through his action of aborting his child, that he was taken to see hell. That like God took him to hell and he saw what hell was like. He experienced hell. It was a place, a dark place, where souls are without God. There's, God is not in hell, there's just there's demons. What happens is that there's fire there, and the souls are tortured because of their sin, because they've chosen to rebel against God. And they've sinned, they've, they've lied, they've killed, they've stolen. And there's a section of hell, depending on whichever sins you've been involved with, lying, stealing, killing, whatever it is. Blaspheming God. So the sections of hell there with demons that torture souls regarding their unrepentant souls, souls which do not love God, souls which don't think there is a God, still don't even think there is a God in hell, and yet many of them still curse God. It's quite funny that, isn't it? If you ask someone, do you believe in God? No. Because what about all the wars, what about all the evils in the world? Well, that's not a reason to see that there is no God, the fact is that you're going to have a problem in your relationship with God because you are probing through your words and actions. You're angry with God. You've got an anger towards God. And you think, well, who is God anyway? You don't know who God is. And just this, maybe it was Jesus, this little carpenter guy, this weak little guy that came and got killed. Maybe that was God. Maybe God's like Buddha, you know, just a statue thing, just in heaven and just hums in heaven, mm, like that all the time. A lot of people have various ideas about who God is, what God is. When I opened my King James Bible, King James was a Catholic king, he was a Scottish king, but around the Reformation time became a British king, and he sanctioned what we have today is the 1611 King James Bible, even though there's many, many different translations to be. And it says in the Word of God, in the book of Revelation, that God is a living, breathing fire, an all-consuming fire. It says that there are creatures around God's throne, mighty creatures, cherubims and seraphim, that every time they bow down and worship the image of God on the throne of God, Jesus Christ, it says that the whole of heaven shakes with the power and the authority of these creatures that are around the throne of God. And it says once they have done that, there is 24 elders that cast their crowns before the living God. And these living creatures say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Continuously, day and night, without rest. Day and night without rest. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, who is to come. 
Now that set out of love, that set out of reverence, that set out of fear, that set out of the fact that God is the one who is keeping this universe going. Yeah, not Scottish power, not the Scottish government. God is the one who is keeping me. This country, this whole entire world, in fact, this entire universe doing it. He's the one who created it. He's the one that could destroy it tomorrow if he wanted. To create a new one, no problem for that. Took him six, six days, my friend. Six days to create heaven and earth. What was it you believe? I believe that there's name. It's a name. Name. Are you, are you a peace, are you a peaceful person? Are you, are you a peaceful person? Religion is. Are you a peaceful person? That's a lie. No, communist governments are the biggest power in the world. Socialists and communist governments are the biggest powers in the world. That's a fact. Well, let's just go by the facts, you know. I'm not really in fear of stories. If you want to tell me what you believe. And you, and you want to be nice about it, good. But I just deal with facts. Yeah, the biggest power is fascist, communist governments. Hallelujah. Fascist, communist governments. Do you think that World War I was fought over religion? Really? What about World War II? Was that over religion? No. None of the big wars are fought over religion. They're fought over land. They have fought over oil, they have fought over gold, silver, diamonds, that type of thing. Possessions, that's why governments fight. It's to bear that type of thing. Power, possessions, money. That's what wars are fought over, not religion. You only save yourself. Anyway, where was I? I was describing the throne of God and heaven, according to the Bible. Whatever idea you have of God, Various religions of different ideas about who God is. For example, in the Quran. Now, according to the Quran, the Muslims say that the main prophet in the Quran is Muhammad. But even though Jesus is mentioned more times in the Quran than Muhammad. Even though Jesus did miracles and Muhammad did very miracles. Even though Jesus is alive today and Muhammad is dead. I know a few Muslims who have read the Quran and decided to follow Jesus Christ. Why would you do that? I wish I could say the same. Well, obviously, the, the Reformation, the few Catholic priests actually read the Bible and they, they rebelled against the Catholic Church. And just in the same way, a few Muslims have read the Quran and rebelled against the uh, uh, Islam. Why? Why? If you can study it, Surah 3, verse 55, says that I, God, shall kill you, Jesus. And so in Islam, they say that Jesus didn't die, but there's God saying in Surah 3, 55, I shall cause you to die. I shall contend against those who have contended against you. And this is God speaking about Jesus Christ. And then God says, I shall exalt your followers above all. And these are the followers of Jesus Christ. God bless you. So again, we're just talking about Jesus in the Quran. Hallelujah. Many Muslims have decided to follow Jesus Christ. In the Reformation, many Catholic priests decided to follow Jesus Christ alone. Stop praying to Mary, stop praying to the saints, and they decided we're just going to follow Jesus. And that's what Christianity is, ladies and gentlemen. A confession that Jesus is who he says he is, he's the Son of the Living God. He is the Messiah, the Anointed One, and the present and coming King of Israel. That was the confession the Apostle Peter actually said in the Bible 2,000 years ago. Very simple. God is love. God is truth. God is light. In whom is no darkness. 
Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And so you can imagine, you can possibly imagine in your mind what heaven is like. And these living creatures are all God's throne. And this majesty of light in front of you right now, this thing here is like a spaceship. But it's about maybe a hundred times brighter than that thing there. And you're approaching the throne of grace. And you feel the presence of the living God praying through the universe. And you must bow down before him. You know, you must worship him. It says that no flesh can survive. No flesh can live and see God. That's what the Bible also says. This is why God came through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to give his salvation on that cross of Calvary. But Jesus in his resurrected state, he said he is seven times greater than the Son. In all its glory, seven times greater than the Son. It's not some bad thing of God. But he is the creator of the universe. Are we really, really fun? No, no, if you, if you don't remind me, we'll be. Where are you from? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I just, I just want to, to see the dog because I like it a lot, the dog. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know from Kazakhstan, huh? Uh, <laughs> Eastern Europe, man. Yeah, Eastern Europe. Eastern Europe. Yeah, yeah. Eastern Europe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so what the world? He's got Jesus loves you. Yeshua loves you. Hallelujah. You show the good news of Jesus Christ. Is that we don't have to suffer and die for our own sin. It says that men sometimes love to be in darkness. Can you imagine that? Imagine that is like, it's not God, but imagine God is light. And you're like scared of that thing. You want, you want to stay in the darkness. So no, I don't want to go to God. It says, approach the throne of grace and darkness, knowing that God loves you. God created you, he knows you. He created you in his image. Hallelujah. It says that God created in his own image. 